You're listening to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS podcast with hosts John and Pemba and James Grande. What's going on, FA Nation? John Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome to the Better Baseball MLB DFS Playbook podcast here recording, previewing Wednesday's nine game main slate there, kicking off at 7 05 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's going to be a fun slate, James. Shohei Otani on the mound. Hopefully no finger cramps come about this time around as he goes up against the Giants here as our top price pitcher. Uh, but guys like Kevin Gossman, Max Freed, who we haven't seen on a DFS slate for you and I in a little bit. I know he just recently made his uh, return there. Uh, Merrill Kelly, you Darvish, Logan Allen, a lot of these guys that feels like almost deja vu a little bit. You know, I, I understand they come through every five days, but, you know, the weekend kind of cuts down on the shows we do. But really, it's only been like two shows in between the last time these guys have uh, have taken the mound here. So uh, it should be a pretty good slate to break down. Again, nine games on the main slate here. Uh, those of you, uh, quick shout out to our sponsor, Real Time Fantasy Sports. Those of you who haven't yet signed up, go to uh, realtimertsports.com slash alarm, promo code alarm23. New users will get a 100% deposit match. Up to $200, you can take part in the DFS Pick'em Contest or their fantasy football and best ball fantasy football championship contest with your deposit match there as well. So go check out all the great things happening over at Real Time Fantasy Sports. Uh, those of you who are tuning in and maybe new to the show, please like and subscribe. Certainly helps us out here, gets the word out to everybody, and uh, shows a little appreciation uh, that we have for you guys as well. Uh, coming in every time and uh, commenting, liking, and doing all the great stuff to help support us here over at Fantasy Alarm and the Better Sports Network. Uh, nine games on the main slate, James, here. Let's uh, talk a little bit about these matchups. Uh, anything going on over at Vegas right now that of note should be talked about? Um, Let's see. Anything of note for the main slate? Um, Nine implied runs in Atlanta-Pittsburgh. Nine in Houston-Baltimore. Nothing over nine. Uh, cur- currently nothing... No, like, significant um, numbers either in terms of favorites. Max Max Reed and the Braves, minus almost 280, is the biggest favorite on the board. But nothing else really of sig- much significance. Right. Well, let's get into it then. Shoy Otani, Kevin Gossin, Max Freed, Merrill Kelly, your 9K and above tier here. Otani against the Giants. Gossman gets Cleveland. Freed gets Pittsburgh. And Kelly against the Dodgers. Obviously, keying in on two matchups right away. Gossman going up against Cleveland. And free going up against Pittsburgh, even though Pittsburgh has been a thorn in our sides at times this season. Uh, easiest of the two matchups, I think, of the top four. Yeah. Um, now, like, I think I would probably play any of the top four other than Merrill Kelly. Truthfully. Sure. Um, no particular order, in my opinion. Um, I, I like what we got from Freed in his return still limited 72 pitches. So like, what if he gets in any trouble here and he's only at 80 pitches, is that going to be enough to get 9,400? So that's a concern. I think the Gossman Otani upside is just trumps everything else. like, um, but Otani's had his worries too. He's left like a bunch of starts this year and mixed in like with some amazing stuff. Obviously he's left multiple starts, multiple games and, just been a hitter I think what after was that, you know? is against Seattle, four innings, three hits, gives up uh, the four strikeouts, leaves with the hand cramp, and then homers. And then, uh, dude, but and we've talked about this. He does this all the time. Like, he yeah. leaves games pitching, and he just hits home runs. Stays in the game to hit. Hand was okay to hit. Um, and I, was it you that said, like, if he leaves the game, we should then get his hit? Live stats? bet. Yeah, live, live bet. bet. Yeah, live bet a home run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so I agree with you. I think any of those three, Freed, obviously, is a little bit more concerning because it could be a pitch count. Gossman, I feel like I've I've not gotten this man correct yeah. a lot this year. This is another spot where it's like on paper should be a smash spot for him. But look at his recent games. I mean, he's been giving up runs. Certainly the high strikeouts have helped him, you know, 28 fantasy points against the Angels, uh, 33 there against San Francisco with the 12 Ks. But you know, Cleveland's a team that doesn't strike out. And what do we always say about teams that strike out? There are days where they, they're, those balls just find, find holes, right? right? Yep. Washington Nationals, they just singly get a death. And then all of a sudden, one guy will get one and it's a three RBI double. And, and there you go, your night's over. So 
you know, that's the concern for me with Gosson is that he is giving up some runs and he is giving right. up hits. And, you know, he's got to face a team that doesn't strike out. But I on, on paper, Cleveland's been dreadful. They don't have Josh Naylor uh, anymore in their lineup. They obviously traded away Bell. Um, so uh, you got to at least give him some love. And ownership-wise, he, he may – he may be the top guy. He's typically very high rostered, so he he might be. Um, it's going to be probably between him and... F- I am assuming Freed's going to get a lot of ownership. We saw um, Wade Miley be the second highest rostered pitcher after one start back again in a good matchup. Like That's just what people do. They just play guys that are in good matchups and Freed doesn't yeah. play matchups. So I, I would say Gossman's probably the top owned followed by Freed and Otani. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair to say. Uh, moving down into the mid-tier range here, um, what sticks out to you? I mean, you know, I, I mean, for me, it might be Pavetta, but is he going to start? Is he going to open? Like, what's – I mean, is he going to be the long reliever? Where does he go here? Because I do like Boston, obviously, against Jordan Lyles. You know, Pavetta yeah. had to go up against Toronto, and as good as Toronto was in that series – he actually pitched the best against them for Boston. Right. So, you know, Pavetta at $7,800, I think might be the highest roster guy of that range. Which isn't saying a lot, just given that there's not a lot to like. Um, I would say yes to Pavetta because of the matchup, even though the Royals have been better, full body of work suggests they've been the worst. Uh, I don't really have much interest in Bobby Miller. He's been yeah. very inconsistent. Flaherty looked amazing in his Orioles debut. Um, I'm not going to run him against Houston. But, like, it's Houston. Right. It's Houston. Clevenger, we saw, you know, even in a, a pretty good spot against Cleveland, he looked terrible. Um, a lot of fly ball outs, which is scary against the Yankees because all the Yankees can do is homer. Like, yeah. it's the only possible way they score runs. Um Hendricks, Pete, like this is a bad, bad pitcher's position. So I largely agree. Um, who is this Emerson Hancock kid from double A? He is expected to be called up for Wednesday. 98 innings and 107 strikeouts. He has a 144 ERA over his last four four outings. 4K. You know, we, we we always mess with these 4K. We, we've we definitely played them. I don't know if San Diego is the team I want to play. <laughs> I don't either. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sold. I'm just like literally looking, John. Like you tell me outside of Nick Pavetta if there's actually something that interests you. It might be just a 4K dart. That, but could I don't. Be a, it could be just a 4K dart. It could be a spend up. Um, we didn't mention Darvish. Would you would you play Darvish against Seattle? Mm, Coming off of an okay couple fine. okay starts. I mean, yeah, he's fine. Go figure. Go. I mean, first of all, the F Pittsburgh. You, you Darvish. The, I know. It's okay. The Pittsburgh, yeah. Six shot against Toronto. We play him against Pittsburgh against Rock. Six shot against Texas. Seven and two against the Dodgers. So, like, outside of the easiest match we had on the board, he's been very good. So, and the Philly start and the Philly start before the Toronto. Yeah, start. Yeah, Philly start before that. Yeah, sure. 8800 is a good price. It's just like if you're playing Gossman, right? There is not a lot to like. No, I, that's why I think Pivetta might be like 30% rostered on this slate. Yeah, probably. Because you're not going to go anybody. You're not going to go anybody else. No. You're not going to go Priester. No, yeah. You're, you're not, not going to go no, back. You yeah. know, it was, it was an opening, it looks like here. I don't know. Like, so. Yeah, that or it could be, it could just be it could be the Hancock play. Uh, so we'll see we'll see how it all plays out here. Obviously, as we move down, got to show up to our live show at five o'clock Eastern. James and I will update with all the latest news and then roster updates as it comes across. Uh, catcher, uh, you know, top spend ups overall on the infield. Uh, we just talked about how we basically hated everybody under eight K. So <laughs> there's got to be plenty of t- targets for us then offensively, right? Yeah, I mean Matt Olson right off the rip. Right. Obviously. Um, now Pete priced Alon- above Freeman after being priced below Freeman on, yeah. the, on the Tuesday slate. Yep. Uh, now the most expensive first baseman of the slate, Matt Olson, 63. Obviously, if you want to get to Freeman, that's fine. But, you know, 
I don't love attacking Merrill Kelly in current form. I don't think we need to do that. Um, Pete Alonso has been really good of late, a lot of power. Kyle Hendricks just got shelled. We know the the fly ball rate for Kyle Hendricks yeah. is never good. Uh, home, talk about fly ball rate, Jordan Lyles. He has to face Devers' story at 5,200 apiece. Both those guys firmly in play. Um, yeah, I mean, it, easy to play them too because, you know, Justin Turner is questionable to play on, on the Tuesday slate. Tristan Casas at 3,900 at home against Jordan Lyles. Like, this could be a slate where Boston is is the team to stack up here, you know? Yep. Yep, and they'll be they'll be rostered that way. I mean, Jordan yeah. Lyles is usually picked on in DFS land, so it won't be surprising to see him really popular here. No, I agree. I agree with you. 100%. Them, them. Sorry, them as in the Reds. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think Toronto could be something to look at. Uh, maybe against Logan Allen, we've talked about his inconsistencies. Sure, um, a team that nobody ever plays, right? Nobody plays Toronto, but you know, yeah. it could be a spot yeah. to play Toronto here. Um, you know, going up, going up against in, in their spot. Uh, let's see. Anybody else has a top price play for you? No, I'm I'm looking at. Um, it's probably some good value I'm looking at here. Jan Gomes, thirty one hundred, gets David Peterson. Yeah. Um, same with uh, Dansby Swanson. I know Swanson's not like no, mid- value. Mid-tier. He's forty seven hundred. Yeah. Him and Candelario, both in the mid tier, they get lefties uh, in Peterson. So I like both those um, yeah. those options quite yeah. a bit. I, I agree with you 100. I think Gunner against Javier could be a spot to go up against. He's been super mm-hmm. inconsistent this year. Um, Mustakis gets you know whoever the Giants decide to throw out there. I don't know if is this a Manaya long start? Could be. You know, so I guess that's something. Yeah, could be something to pay attention to. I guess. Uh, whoever their long guy is going to be out of this one um, to watch. So um, definitely some interesting plays here, I think, at the uh, at the infield position, especially when it comes to uh, some of the top end and value uh, tier guys. So I'm um, trying to see if there's anybody else that maybe we're – Andrew Vaughn um, has been really so, yeah, good Yeah, I mean, White Sox against Sevy, right? I mean, we're going to want to play probably attack. Andrus, especially if Andrus is leading off again. Potentially, I know um, Tim Anderson wasn't in Tuesday's lineup because the hit by pitch on uh, Monday's game. If he's still out for Wednesday's game, I would take a look at Elvis Andrus if he's leading off. Uh, he's still not. He's twenty four hundred dollars, uh, so twenty four hundred second baseman, and then Andrew Vaughn. And if like honestly, if like the lineup reads. Andrus, somebody, maybe Vaughn. Ben Attendee maybe hitting second. Luis, Luis Robert. Yeah, I mean, there's like a lot of interest at the top of the line. I know they've been they've moved um they've moved Vaughn up sometimes and he's been really good lately. Hits in five straight games, home runs in two of three, thousand OPS over his last ten games. A Vaughn at uh thirty four, Andrus at twenty four, and then you bring it back, like finish your stack with Luis Robert yeah. could be really, really good. I agree. All right, let's move on over to outfield. Again, we mentioned a lot of these top-end guys here. Um, Acuna is now up to $6,800. Again, we're inching closer to that 7K outfielder. Uh, we've never seen it on DraftKings before. We've never had a guy at 7K. So, uh, well, I, he's, he's getting there. That Priester. Uh, Judge against Clevenger feels pretty good. Jordan and Tucker love that against Flaherty here. Totally in on that. <clears throat> Soto gets the yep. rookie call-up at $5,900. She feels pretty good at that one as well. And you mentioned Robert uh, at $5,500 uh, up there. So some very expensive guys for kind of a, a, a slate where, you know, there wasn't a lot of value pitching. So No, no. I mean, it makes you, it just makes you think about ownership and if Kevin Gossman is going to be the most right. popular pitcher and if people are going to take shots on 4K pitchers and if, Max Fried's going to be 60% as because he's going to be the SP1 right. that everyone goes to, right? So, uh, yeah, obviously you could play Cunha against Priester. Priester's been bad. Uh, Aaron Judge has the home run upside always, both San Diego guys. Um, I do like Luis Robert quite a bit at 55, if I'm being honest. I mean, Sevy, you know, he, dude, he has been, his best start lately was Kansas City where he, you know, gave up, Two home yeah. runs, eight hits, and three earned, and 
I know he's had like a few good starts mixed in, albeit like go figure against Texas's best start of the year, six scoreless. But um, yeah, we were all in on four- Houston in his last start, and um, yep. Tucker didn't disappoint and- in that game. So I think they both homered in that game. Tucker and Jordan yeah. both homered in that game. So I uh, both of those guys again, I think are in play against Flaherty for me. So. Yep. Um, going down into this mid-tier spot again, the Red Sox guys obviously will stand out. Yoshida's at 48. Uh, we can play Duvall probably even at that point. Uh, Duran's down to 41 after being priced up for a few slates here. Verdugo, yep. if he's not benched, is $3,800. So uh, <laughs> Red Sox for sure, I think, are all going to be in play. Michael Harris is 43. You know I'm a big fan of his after our back yep. and forth and during the uh, Tuesday show. Yeah, I like all those plays, and I'll sprinkle in some um, Blue Jays here against Logan Allen. 49 for Springer, 44 for Merrifield. Sure. Um, both those guys are in play. And then, like, dropping below 4K, you have the Cubs still vastly yeah, underpriced. Ian, Ian, like, just every slate. It's rinse and repeat. They're just, say it's 32, Hap's, Hap's actually getting up there. Uh, 37. He's really yeah. expensive, 37. So, uh, uh, both those Yeah, guys Eloy's here at 37 as well, assuming he's, you know, ready yep. to play. So, yep. Uh, I'm with you 100% on that spot there. Davis Schneider, now outfield on Ooh, I, I was wondering where he was. 3,100. Uh, interesting. I like that. If you're not in on Pavetta, I mean, Melendez is 31. Yep. Um, could be a spot there. Ryan O'Hearn, first base outfield eligible against Javier. Um, let's see. Anything else that's popping here? I guess it depends. You know, Jake McCarthy is really slowed off, but I mean, depending on where. Yeah, the two uh, stolen bases off Keiko the other day. Yeah. Oh, you said everybody's running on Keiko, right? So that's that's good to know. <laughs> Next time Dallas Keiko's on the mound, everybody takes off yep. on him. Yep. Um. Also, shout out Jake McCarthy. He's played half a season as twenty five stolen bases. He <laughs> if he didn't get sent down for two months, who knows where he'd be? Yeah. Uh. Anybody else? Not that I see, unless Not we'll, I we'll, either, we'll yeah. see. We'll that'll be more concrete come live stream at five. I agree with you. All right, let's give a first look build here for everybody. Oof, is it going to be? Uh, ooh, do this we, gonna be do a... we build with Pivetta? Do we build with Hancock, or do we double spend Darvish and Gossman or something? I don't know. What are you feeling? We could do. We could do Darvish Pavetta if you feel, but we also could not do that. And I'm, do... so like, here's the thing: I think that could be an interesting way to go because we're not, we we obviously love Otani. If we can get to Otani, I would, I would play Otani. I like Gossman has a great match against Cleveland, but what version of Gossman shows up? You know, that's that's certainly a, a worry. So, um, yeah, we can go Darvish Pavetta, and we'll see what we can build here. And and uh, if we have money to move up, we have money to move up at the end, and we can go get somebody like, uh, you know, Gossman or somebody. So, um, all right, catcher here. John Gomes, thirty-one. Yeah, that's an easy plug. First base. I mean, like obviously, any of these spends up spend ups are fine. I kind of like the Vaughn thirty-four play. Like we don't have to go there. Um, I'm, go- I'm cool I'd going do. White Sox. I mean, if you want to go White Sox, just plug Vaughn and Eloy in now. Yep. Not Eloy, or Bellinger, or sorry, Robert and Eloy. Just plug all three of them in there. Yep. And again, like, this is the first look. If Tim Anderson's still at the lineup Wednesday and Anderson's, yeah, Anderson's leading off, he's $2,400. Yeah. $2, like, we don't have to play full White Sox if we don't want, but, like, also, this is a lot of money. Gives us a lot of money to play with. Trevor Story, is he second base only? Sadly. Mm, hurdle. I, I don't know for how much longer, though, because he started at shortstop tonight. So Right. All right. So that will that will change. Uh that will change shortly then. Let's see. Story at 52. $2,500 shortstop. Was there even a guy? $2,500 shortstop. Not really. Um uh, no. See. Now let's get off Yoshida then. Let's go down to Duran. What does that put us at? 32. Uh, Volpe? Volpe is actually the only like breathing player at this. <laughs> Do you mean Paul DeYoung? Yeah, Paul DeYoung could. I mean, he's also so predictably hitting less than 100 in his last 10 games because this has been the entire career of Paul DeYoung. 
in yeah. like on every, I mean, it's just I'm having deja vu all over again as Yogi Berra. I agree. On. It's like we, every, we, can, <laughs> we can two man, we can two man, um, Devers and Sorian. and we got 3650. Yeah. Um, well, there's is, we could play Saya maybe do a little cubbies. He was 3200 if you didn't want to like, complete dumpster dive. And then we 41 have one for sure. Does it even get us anything here? J, JP, uh, we're using using Darvish Rangifo. Yeah, I'd play Rangifo. We don't, I guess, know what San Francisco is doing, but. Because it's not like Beck isn't gonna he right. pitched on the seventh. He only pitched a batter, but he pitched on the seventh. Pitched four innings on the third, but he only threw forty eight pitches. So I assume it's another open. I mean, San Francisco opens every other day. I don't. I mean, I, would you go Ben Attendee here against uh, against Severino or no? I don't think. Like, I have never lost sleep not playing at your Benetton. That's fair. That's fair. All right, let's you know, go back then to say it, because I do, I do like that play. Uh, where is he? There he is. 32. So just an example lineup that we have for everybody here. Darvish, Pavetta, Jan Gomes, Andrew Vaughn, Trevor Story, Rafael Devers, Luis from GFO, Luis Robert, Eloy Jimenez, and say Suzuki, $200 left over again. James and I will be back live at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We'll update you all the lineups, the news, the weather, the spreads, you name it. We'll cover it here. At 5 o'clock Eastern, bring you a new lineup as needed as well. Get us in the Discord. We'll talk to you guys later.